It's here! It's finally here. Stability AI has released Stable Diffusion 3. Finally. Now, you might be wondering what all the hype is about. Why do you need to be excited about this? Well, Stable Diffusion 3 is next generation image generation model. And with it comes some major improvements to the way that we create images. It's got better text generation, better prompt adherence, and better quality images overall. Meaning we can stop getting images like this and a few more like this. On top of that, the model seems to be a lot better at receiving instructions on where to place things within an image, whether certain characters should have certain traits and following through with that rather than mixing all of it together. I'm really excited to see how it handles drinking coffee because whenever I have told a stable diffusion XL or SDXL model that my character needs to be drinking coffee, they've got two cups and a few extra arms. So it'll be exciting to see how that works out. Now, I, I want to set some expectations because even though there's a lot of hype around this new model, just like with the original release of SDXL, I don't expect amazing things out of the box. However, the fact that this model is several steps ahead of where SDXL was or is supposed to be, this creates an incredible base for an incredible base for the community to fine tune models on. And in fact, the Pony team have already said that they're working on a fine tune for Stable Diffusion 3. So we can only expect things to go uphill from whatever we see today. And that's where the true excitement is and not what the model comes out of the box with, but what the community is going to be able to do with it. So without further ado, let's get plugged in and see how to get set up with this model. So the best way to use Stable Diffusion 3 right now is by either doing it with Comfy UI or with Swarm UI, both released by Stability AI. That's a lot of AI. Now, if you've got Stability Matrix, that's pretty easy. You just go over to your Packages section, add a package, and you'll have Stable Swarm UI right there. So go ahead and install that if you haven't already. If you don't know what Stability Matrix is, I have another video I'm working on. So if it's done, it'll be linked somewhere up here. So you'll see here that Comfy UI is required to install this package. We already have it. So let's go ahead and do that and click install. Once you do have Stable Swarm installed, you want to head over to the Hugging Face link that I will have in the description section below, where you can find the Stable Diffusion 3 Medium model. So you need to actually be signed up for Hugging Face to download it. So if you have an account, log in. Otherwise, go ahead and sign up. Once you've been unceremoniously forced to change your password, which I immediately went and forgot, you will need to agree to the terms and conditions of Stability AI, which is meaning that you can't use the model for commercial purposes unless you get uh, unless you subscribe to Stability AI. They have a plan for creators at around $20 a month. If you are using it for less than a million dollars in revenue or 6,000 generations or something like that. And it's only meant if you're using the model to let people generate. If you're not making money off the model, you don't need to pay anything. So go ahead and plug in your details. As you can see here, the model is not for commercial use unless you acquire a separate license from Stability AI. Go ahead and agree that and you'll get access to the model. Head on over to file and the models will be available here. So you'll notice that we have three versions of the model. We've got SD3 medium, SD3 medium, including clips and SD3 medium with clip and T5. And the difference between them is that the regular medium safe tensor comes without the text encoders, meaning that this one is not going to have the ability or a very bad ability at generating text in the model. However, that makes it the lightest model. The clip and T5 files do contain different text encoders with the with the clips plus T5 one being the most complete. It's 10 gigabytes, so that's going to eat up the most space, eat up the most resources. And then the medium one only contains clips. And these are just basically different text encoders that improve the ability of the model to generate text. Now, the text encoders are also available here separately. So you can download them separately. And I think there's a comfy UI workflow that loads them in separately, which means that if there are different text encoders that are released or better ones, we can mix and match those in comfy UI. So for our purposes, because I have a 3090, I'm going to go ahead and download the complete one. And we're going to try and run that in Swarm. And then after that, we'll run it in Comfy UI. So let's go ahead and grab it. And once the download is completed, we can go ahead and open up our downloads folder along with our models folder. 
we should be able to just go in to if you're using stability matrix stable fusion or your checkpoints folder and drop in the model so let's go ahead and move it here and let's dive into the stable swarm ui great and now that we find ourselves in stable swarm we can go ahead over here to models and if we scroll through we should see that we have our stable diffusion 3 medium model so let's go ahead and grab it and we'll immediately be able to drop in a prompt. And I've got a few prompts from Midjourney, so I think let's go ahead and grab some of them and try them out and see what Stable Diffusion 3 does. So this is one that I recently used with Midjourney. If you wanna see the, if you wanna see some of the work that I'm creating, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. And let's see what Stable Diffusion 3 creates for us. So the first time you run it, it might take a minute because it is actually downloading the clip models. Uh, I can see that over here on the console. So give it a minute and let's see what it comes out with. Okay, so pretty cool considering that the amount of information I put in that prompt, I was almost expecting the model to go and give me something deformed or crazy, but all things considered, the model is in pretty good shape. Nothing strange or deformed. Uh, you know, the eyes could be a little bit better, but overall it's a pretty impressive result. Let's go ahead and try and add in something else. Here's another one that I tested out with Midjourney. And you'll note, I haven't really had to put in any negative prompts yet. And we can see that the model is generating a lot faster now that it's downloaded the clips. This uh, inference speed is actually amazing. Again, I'm running on a 3090 and this took barely a few seconds to generate. And again, I I'm, I'm actually blown away by the quality. This is a lot better than what we received with SDXL. Let's try something with text. Uh, in fact, let's take the existing prompt and let's just have her hold up a sign. <laughs> okay, well, this one starts to get a little hallucinating. Um, again, we're starting to have issues with hands, but the face is still really good. She's got the glitter on the face, which is what we did say. Does have that dreamlike look and the text is absolutely crisp. Let's try something else. So I just threw in the word anime there and okay so the style is a little rough uh, again the text is crisp and you should absolutely do what she's saying and like and subscribe but the art style is a little rough the hands are not as bad as they could be in the past it's still not perfect but most of it i mean it's 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 hands it's it's recognizable hands just badly sketched but throwing in the anime tag there kind of gives it this more it doesn't have that sublime anime look and we'll have to try out a few prompts to see how we can get that done. So let's add in a handful of helpers and see what result that gives us. So it's interesting to see that with SDXL, we would oftentimes add in things like 8K, ultra detailed, highly detailed, high definition, and we'd get a better result. But this time it doesn't seem to have done much of a difference. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of terminology we can use to drive the model in a certain direction, or maybe it's just not had a lot of anime training, and this is why we're not getting amazing anime results. Let's go back to something a bit more photorealistic. I'm gonna remove anime and see what the prompt does. And I'm gonna leave those helper keywords in there. Huh, that's interesting. So by removing the anime keyword, we ended up getting a cooler art style. And again, hands, still not perfect. This one's got one, two, three, four, five, six index fingers, and I guess a thumb. So that, mean, that makes her a seven-figured Anubis. Now, if we remove the helper terms, let's see what we get. So it looks like this is where the model is starting to struggle a bit. Uh, I've given it this terminology girl with long black hair dressed like Anubis, and it's naturally shifting to this uh, art style, even though I haven't put anime, the previous one was kind of realistic. So let's add in a few helper terms now. Let's add in photograph of a girl. And interestingly, we are still getting a, a cartoony style. Let's add that in here. Cartoon anime. Okay, well, we get something more realistic, but this is definitely a concept that the model is struggling with. And I can't help but wonder if it has anything to do with the parameter size. It'll be interesting to compare what this looks like with the larger models. And in fact, uh, I will put this up later. There should be an image here of this exact same prompt on the ultra model. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Okay, fine. So we've seen what the model can do with text. Let's test it out with multiple subjects. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep it simple. Let's have two subjects in there. 
a woman dressed as a pirate standing atop a giant bottle. Okay, I guess that kind of works. Let's try and give in a, a little bit more detail. So, okay, I mean, I guess it's not wrong, but it's not what I had in mind. What uh, is interesting though, is if we come here and look at the giant bottle, which, which does have text on it, it, it looks like unless you specify the text, we still have that issue that is prevalent in a lot of AI images where it'll still make up stuff on the text. It would have been nice if the model could have actually thought of text to put here, but let's, let's try and fix that. Okay, fine. So it looks like the model was able to more or less get that right, but as our character gets smaller and we try and direct it with multiple prompts, we can start to see issues that were prevalent in SDXL or even SD 1.5, where the face is getting deformed, we're losing fidelity in the hands, and if we were using Comfy UI, we would probably want to run this through a face replacer. Let's try something a little bit different. Okay, uh, it handled that one pretty well. A nice, very nice level of detail in the ocean. And once again, it'll be fun to see how well we can upscale these. Let's try something else with the multi-subject prompting. Let's put two ship. The ship is blue. Okay, so the model was able to generate two ships and follow the prompt. The one on the right is red, the one on the left is blue, but the moment we have two subjects in here, the ships kind of go a little crazy. Let's run through a couple of more generations and see what we get. This one is slightly better, but again, you know, we have the two masts here, so... Like I said earlier, like, like I said earlier, you know, a, a, this is a great place for the community to start with. The models are not perfect, and we knew that there were going to be issues. I think it's a big step up from SDXL, and I think we can only go upwards from here. Before we finish up, let's jump into Comfy UI as they did release a handful of workflows that we can use with SD3. Now, one of the really cool things about Stable Swarm is that it's got Comfy UI built in. It's just one of the tabs up here, so we don't need to jump out and jump back in. So let's go ahead and have a look at the basic workflow that they've provided and what are the nodes that are important. So as usual, we just use the standard load checkpoint, load in your model right here. Let's just adjust this so that it picks up my where my model is located then it will ask you so then we need the triple clip loader where we load up the three clips now i don't think i actually need to do that because i already have the clips built in so we're just going to go ahead and grab the clip from here at least that's how it should work in theory there's also a dedicated SD3 latent image loader. I'm guessing that they've made some changes in the way the latent is generated. We have our text prompt here. I'm just going to leave it as is since we're just testing it out. Now they've added an interesting set of nodes here between the prompts and the case sampler, starting with this conditioning zero out from the negative prompt. Then they add in this conditioning set time step range again between the negative prompt and then they go ahead and combine it back into negative. I'm gonna leave it as is, but we'll try it out without all of this and see what happens. But it's good to have a baseline. Then from the load checkpoint, we take model, feed it into model sampling SD3. Uh, they've set here the shift to three. I have no idea what that does. I'll probably make a separate video diving deeper into the workflows. If you're interested, please let me know in the comment section below. We'll go through all the workflows and break down what each of the nodes do. Then we go from model over here into the case sampler, feed it into VA decode, and then preview the image. So let's go ahead and run that. This is actually a pretty cool image, nice level of detail. Of course, this is a handpicked prompt by the Stability AI team, so of course it's gonna work out well. It's pretty long, there's a good level of detail here, and it turned out really well. That's it, and that's all you need to do to get Stable Diffusion 3 running on your machine. Once again, if you guys want me to do a deep dive into the nodes in Comfy UI, please do let me know in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. I also have my Discord where I invite you to come, chat, check it out, and share your Stable Diffusion 3 creations. We're always thrilled to see what you guys are coming up. We've just launched a new competition, so it's a great place to drop your image generations. Come on down, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.